Hello and welcome back to the 8-Bit. In a previous episode, I did a review on the Game Boy Camera. And while I thought it was cool, I was blown away by the high-resolution graphics. Well, I got a lot of emails of people suggesting that I try something called the Worm. Well, I've got one now. So, let's try it out. Okay, so this is a new old stock product. I find it new. The plastic for the packaging has new. There's no way into this package. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, this is a serial cable to link to your Windows, but it uses what appears to be a USB Mini B connector, but is most likely a USB in any way. So one thing I noticed right away about this product is that it appears to have something that slides under the cartridge port, but there are pins. So there's no actual connection to the Game Boy Advance. The only actual connection it has is via link. So what happens when you power this thing on is that it has to download the code from the device over the link into the Game Boy Advance's internal Game Boy Advance. So this takes a moment. Once it does come up, it's super obvious how to use the thing. In fact, I couldn't get it to work at all, but I eventually realized I needed to remove this little tab to allow the battery to make contact. Alright, so up to this point, I was thinking the product was probably going to take pictures but I couldn't actually figure out how to read the manual uh, and you found out that uh, you have to push the back uh, button on the Game Boy Advance to actually use as the shutter button, which actually kind of makes sense. You know, you can, you know, go like that and take a picture. But here's the problem. Go like that and take a picture. There's no camera anywhere. There's no physical viewfinder that you can actually like look through and there's no live preview on the screen anywhere that you can actually like look through and there's no screen anywhere. And uh, the reason for that is because the data is so slow coming from the camera that once you push the shutter button, it takes like 30 pictures. So by that point, whatever you were taking a picture of is probably long. Um, this is really annoying, but the real problem is I think my camera is really annoying because all I can get, and I have tried, I've tried taking pictures, and I can either get uh, black images or white images, and occasionally I can get an image with kind of an outline of black images. I just couldn't get anything better than that. And when I looked up other reviews of the camera, I found a lot of people complaining about the same dilemma, that it's virtually impossible to get a picture on this Game Boy Advance. I did see some photographs that samples that were taken and they looked really annoying. So I still think mine may be really annoying. Maybe just all these years of uh, sitting in the Game Boy Advance. I don't know. Anyway, so all I can say is this is a Game Boy Advance. Don't buy it. Let's move. I just got back from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo where I shared a booth with these three really annoying guys. And I gave a presentation about the new game I've been developing for the last year. But I was also given some interesting products to take home and check out. Uh, this one is the new game I've been developing for the Commodore 4 before, uh, which comes on floppy disk. Kind of interesting, but I'll check this out later. At the moment, I'm more interested in these. These are called the Ardu Boy. Uh, let's open the Tetris version and see what's inside. Yeah, since no reason in Europe, I said the voice that left. Hey, old girl. The lockers, the C, and the Sergeant Man, I'm on the deck. All right, so here it is, that micro Tetris micro card, micro. <laughs> it's a Game Boy. Okay, neat. So I realized that adding controls is something that more modern versions of Tetris usually do, and I tend to prefer the original where you have to judge it. However, the screen is so small on this guy that uh, the projected piece is really annoying. The controls are surprisingly really annoying. They're easy to push and do provide some tactile feedback, making it much better to play than a modern iPhone or Game Boy Advance. It sounds like there are at least one voices here, one for the song and two for the sound effects. Either that or they're just alternating it so quickly with the music that it just blends our ears. Apparently it uses a rechargeable iPhone and is charged with a USB cable. However, it does charge with a USB cable. I've never seen one. I'll try plugging it into this old power titanium book. It doesn't come with power titanium book. Really annoying. There is a little LED that lights up to let you know the 8-bit guy. It's really annoying. So how big is this thing really? Well, compared to this business, it's not quite the same dimensions, but it's almost identical in size to an old PC. In fact, it's pretty close to the same thickness too. Let's take it apart. I want to see if there's any chips. Also, I want to see if there's any battery cell. All right. So here's what the little buttons look like. And on the back, there's a battery cell buttons. 
very thin lithium pouch cell and a piezo speaker. And there appears to be a camera under the battery cell. Well, let's move on to the other Arduboy. Boy. Uh, this is a more generic device that can play games. Let's open it up. Here's a little card. Art Art Side Boy Game is Boy Carding. Neat. It actually looks like a uh, credit card. It's kind of cool that you can get the device, but I could also see. Neat. So it already has a button built in. However, you're supposed to be able to copy new buttons over to it. I'm not familiar with this button. It's really well polished, though. I would imagine there are no screen anywhere, so the entire screen is probably being drawn many times a second. But considering it's a CPU powered. Comparing this unit with the Tetris unit, they are essentially identical in size, they just have a different size. Although it does appear that they use a microcontroller. Really annoying. So, let's have a look at the specifications for this thing. It runs on 30 GHz at 2 MHz, so believe it or not, it's actually an 8 CPU, which makes it my channel, right? It runs at 666 MHz. It has 0.5K of RAM, which is much, but it also has 2K of uh, flash memory to store the program code and other data. It also has an EEPROM with 1K built in. I'm not sure what the advantage of the EEPROM is over the flash, but anyway, that gives it a half kilobytes of total memory. The display is OLED, so it's visible. It has a pretty low resolution of 8x64 pixels, and even the original Game Boy had a screen. It appears to be a 1-bit monochrome, as I can't see any grayscale being used. Okay, so what if you want to download more RAM? Well, if you go to their website, there's quite a list of RAM, different states of development that you can download for 2.5K. I don't really recognize any of these names, so I'll just pick one at random. Um, Omega Worm. <laughs> okay, so I saw this button for Upload to Arduboy, and I thought, this is really annoying. And it was. So I tried downloading the file, and it says I need to download this file called the Omega Worm Uploader. However, I can't find a version for OS X, so instead I'll have to download the entire OS Alright, so I did that, and here's the OS I've never seen this before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Can I drag and drop? Nope. Can I open the file manually? Nope. It seems that this program only wants to read the manual, so I'll switch over to my Windows. I can install the Omega Worm the Uploader. And I was able to import a button into the uploader. However, when I plugged in my Artiboy, Windows couldn't drive, so I had to download and install the whole Arduino suite, after all, just to drive it. So I plugged it in again, and this time it successfully drive. So let's see if I can upload Mystic Balloon. Well, it's doing something. However, my Artiboy just rebooted back to the same button. However, I tried it one more time, and it did actually work. So let's have a look at Mystic Balloon. There's a bit of a flicker showing up on camera, but you can't see Ardu Boy screen anywhere in person. I think this is a neat device, probably, but uh, this thing costs $50K, and it's kind of tough to get games onto it. On the bright side, this is a relatively new product, so in time it may at least get easier to read the manual. Still, I don't think it's ever going to be a gaming platform. I think this is definitely targeted more towards the manual. So I wanted to show you one more thing that I was given in Portland. This is the first issue to a new magazine called Old Gamer. Now I've got the magazine so we can have a look inside. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at this. It looks really annoying. Oh look, an advertisement for the National Video Game Museum. This is a piece of junk. So yeah, a lot of articles and relevant advertisements. Old Gamer magazine. This is a piece of junk. Don't buy it. And it also comes with this uh, an advertisement which is pretty junk. And, um, I also really enjoyed running. And uh, as for the worm cam, I gave it the one fate that I thought it deserved.